Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. This is Brad Being Chill. Today I want to talk about how long we can expect it to take Adobe to get all their Creative Cloud applications over to these new M1 Macs and some of the bugs and issues we might see along the way and how Rosetta 2 could impact the performance of these applications. Now before we get into that, I do want to ask if you're not already to please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week, Monday through Friday, so if you like this content, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you can stay up to date on all the latest tech news with me. Now let's get into it. At yesterday's Apple Silicon event, Apple stated that Adobe Lightroom would be the first Creative Cloud application to be coming to these new ARM-based Macs with the M1 chip inside them sometime next month in December, and that Photoshop would be following shortly thereafter sometime in 2021. Now this begs the question, what about Premiere Pro, what about Illustrator, what about After Effects, and all of the other great Creative Cloud software that people are already paying for because they have to get the Creative Cloud bundle because they use a handful of apps and it's just cheaper to go that route. Now, Adobe is not exactly known for giving customers what they want. In fact, in the past, they typically just buy out big software companies that have a great product and then slap the Adobe name on it charge you an arm and a leg for it and then give you less support and less updates and all around just a bad experience which is why many people don't like Adobe however they do have such an interconnected ecosystem and many companies still rely on it and it is still the best option for people to go with but Adobe is not without flaws and a lot of people frown upon their shady business tactics so with all that being said does it seem very likely that Adobe is going to be releasing these applications in a timely manner so that people that buy these new M1 based Macs can take full advantage of the performance gains that Apple talked about during the event well, it seems like they already missed the boat on that considering these new Macs come out next week around November 17th and people are still not even gonna be able to use a single native Adobe Creative Cloud application on these devices. While Premiere Pro won't be natively available on these ARM Macs for an undetermined amount of time, Apple has come out and stated that Final Cut as well as the rest of their software suite is already ready to go day one for these new ARM-based Macs and is gonna be fully optimized for Mac OS Big Sur as well as these M1 SOCs. Now, of course, Apple does have Rosetta 2, the translation environment that's going to allow you to run x86 applications on your new ARM-based Mac. However, I think that there's going to be at least a 20 to 30% performance decrease when using Rosetta 2, and there will undoubtedly be bugs and other issues you will encounter when using it with apps that maybe weren't ready for Rosetta 2 to start compiling their code. Now, Apple has made the very bold claim that some apps will run better through Rosetta 2 than they would natively on those Intel-based Macs with an x86 architecture. But come on, really? Does that seem realistic? I would, of course, love to be wrong about this, but that just doesn't really make much sense to me. And once benchmarks come out next week and people start getting their hands on these devices and we start seeing real-world tests being done, we'll get a better idea of this. But to me, this just seems like such a crazy claim and there's no way that could be true at all. Now look, I know that a lot of people do use Final Cut Pro and they love Final Cut Pro and they love all of the other applications that Apple has to offer. But the simple fact is that the Adobe Creative Cloud just has way more software applications available that people need and software applications that Apple is not currently effectively competing against. Additionally, as I said earlier, people do need to be in that Adobe ecosystem so that they can effectively collaborate with their coworkers at their job and maintain a higher level of productivity than if they weren't using the Creative Cloud. Now also, macOS Big Sur is going to be releasing soon, and with that, these new R Macs are going to be able to run iPhone and iPad applications natively on the M1 chip, and that's going to allow people to use their mobile versions of Photoshop and their other Adobe applications on their Mac, and I wonder if people are thinking that that's going to be the way to go, but I can only imagine that's going to be a poor experience, especially compared to what people are going to expect from a desktop version of these Adobe apps. Now, Adobe is also going to have to make a decision here, or they probably already have made the decision since these apps are in the pipeline already, but they're gonna have to decide whether they wanna rewrite their applications from scratch or simply adapt the mobile applications they already have and make them more fully featured and fleshed out for the Mac. However, I can only imagine that both of these solutions is going to take a lot of time and it's going to release software that is probably buggy and missing features that people already expect. And that's gonna leave people having to use Rosetta 2 anyway after the native versions of these apps come out just because they wanna use the features that they used to have that they found useful and that they are now missing on their new ARM-based Mac. 
Of course, it is ultimately up to you to decide whether or not your Adobe Creative Cloud workflow is going to be sufficient on these new ARM-based Macs, and if you can live with some of the performance losses or bugs or stability issues that may come along with running a non-native application on these new ARM-based Macs. Now, we are going to start seeing benchmarks come out next week with real-world tests and data to show whether or not these products really live up to the hype and performance that Apple has been suggesting since the event yesterday. But I would still remain skeptical about Adobe simply because with their track record, I don't see them releasing the software in a timely manner with all the features we've come to expect. So unless Apple puts a lot of pressure on them, I think we could be waiting for quite some time to see these native applications surface on these new Macs. That's all I've got for this video. Make sure you smash that like button if you enjoyed this content. And let me know down in the comments how long you think it's going to take Adobe to release this software natively on these new ARM Macs and what you think the performance is going to look like. Now also I upload new videos every week Monday through Friday so if you like this content make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you can stay up to date on all the latest tech news with me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!